Now we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the magic of how nature actually cleans water for us. I'm going to give you just enough biology and technical know-how so that you can understand how this mini ecosystem you're going to be building is going to work. So first, we must consider what are the actual qualities of clean, fresh water? What separates a beautiful mountain stream that you would happily drink from, from a smelly bog that you would not go near? So the first thing any of us was probably ever taught about safe drinking water in nature was that it always needs to be moving. So the first thing that we need to make sure of is that water is in motion. The second thing is clarity. Clear water is obviously inviting to swim in, but it also means that it's very low in impurities, at least ones that we can see. Then algae is something that's generally not desirable in a natural pool. A little algae is fine and is actually quite healthy, but we certainly don't want green water to be swimming in. And lastly, we just want to be sure that there's no pathogens like germs and viruses in the water. So what is happening in a natural pool to create these conditions? Because if we can understand it, then we can simply mimic it. You see, all the things that we don't want in a natural pool, things like algae, brain-eating amoebas, mosquitoes, they all thrive in water that is warm, stagnant, high in nutrients, and low in oxygen. So with a natural pool, we simply mimic nature to do the opposite. We keep it cool, we keep it moving, we keep the nutrients low and the oxygen high. And nature uses wetlands, plants, and microbes to do most of this work for us. If we move water through the soil, through the plants, and through thriving microbe communities, we will get the clear, algae-free, and sweet-smelling water that we as humans want to drink and we want to swim in. So the filter in a natural pool is the wetland. We call it a biological filter. And in natural pool terms, we call the wetland the regeneration zone. Now remember, a natural pool is divided into two zones. We have the swimming zone and the regeneration zone. Now the swimming zone, as you guessed it, is where the swimming takes place. The regeneration zone is where all of this biofiltration goodness takes place. So in practice, the wetland soil is gravel, as this facilitates a better water flow through the soil. So in order to get our desired clear, algae-free, sweet-smelling water at the end of the day, there are four fundamental things we need to do in a natural, man-made pool to harness this power of nature. We need to circulate the water with a pump. Then we need to mechanically filter the water. And this is essentially just a fancy way of saying we need to trap leaves, sand, pollen, and organic matter and remove it from the pool. Mechanically just means like a sieve, essentially. We need to keep the nutrients low in the pool. Nutrients are things like nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, it's, uh, it's like food or fertilizer, and just like us, things in nature, like bacteria or algae, they need to eat, and they eat nutrients. The last principle which we need to give us beautiful water quality is oxygenation. So let's look at these four a little closer. Firstly, we had the circulation and mechanical filtration. Stagnant water isn't really getting a chance to move through nature's biofilter. Stagnant water is also where nature likes to breed all of its nasties, things like bad bacteria, viruses, and mosquitoes. So number one is pretty easy to take care of. We just need to circulate the water, and ideally 24 hours a day with a tiny low power pump. Then secondly, we had the mechanical filtration. Now, the mechanical filtration physically removes large particles and debris, things like leaves that may fall into the pool. Through, and this is through methods like straining and trapping. It's essentially like a sieve. In a conventional pool, this is usually accomplished with things like a skimmer and a sand filter. 
The skimmer captures leaves, while the sand filter traps small particles like pollen, sand, and organic matter. This ensures that the swim zone remains nice and clear and clean. Even in a natural pool, we still need mechanical filtration to prevent things like pollen, dust, organic matter, and leaves from accumulating as the wetland can't trap all of this. These particles can also end up forming a sludgy layer on the bottom of the pool. So it's good to remove them because not only does it contribute to an increase in nutrient levels in the system, but also because swimming in a dirty pool is not really a vibe. Then we have biological filtration, which is essentially keeping the nutrients low. So nutrients, things like nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, this is all essentially food or fertilizer for bacteria, algae, or plants. They all need to consume it to survive. And these nutrients in a natural pool are kept low because the regeneration zone acts as a giant biofilter, which absorbs them. So let's look a little bit closer at this concept of biological filtration and what it means. So you see, in a conventional chlorine pool, the nutrients just build up and build up over time. But the biology in the pool, things like algae and bacteria, those are controlled by chlorine, which kills any microorganisms. And this prevents the water from having pathogens and turning green with algae. When a pool turns green, it's because there are millions and millions of tiny little singular cell green algae that are suspended in the water. And although this is not harmful, a green pool is not very inviting or not great for swimming. So in a natural pool, we rely on biological filtration instead of chlorine. The regeneration zone, which remember was also called the plant zone or the wetland area, contains various aquatic plants growing in gravel alongside millions and millions of beneficial microorganisms. These plants and these tiny microorganisms, they help to purify the water by absorbing nutrients that are flowing through them and passing these nutrients onto the plants. This way, there is nothing left for the algae, and that's how the pool stays clear. So yes, the regeneration zone also does a fair amount of trapping, physically trapping small organic particles and pathogens, which it then breaks down and it changes them into gases and other chemicals that can then be dissolved or absorbed. So just to make a clear distinction, the mechanical filter just traps large debris, which has to then be removed by the human. And the biological filter mainly absorbs nutrients, but also does some trapping of smaller particles, which it breaks down and then removes. Okay, so now I wanna talk about something called biofilm. The biological filtration that happens in the regeneration zone relies on a magical substance called biofilm. Biofilm is a thin but tough layer of sticky glue-like stuff that adheres to surfaces and contains a whole community of bacteria and microorganisms. In natural pools, biofilm forms on gravel, on the roots, It'll form on the pool walls and other surfaces. Biofilm is the stuff that forms on your teeth when you don't brush them. You see, biofilm gives all our tiny microorganisms loads of advantages. It's like a barrier that protects them from drying out and it protects them from chemicals as well. It allows them to collect more nutrients than if they were just floating in water. And you see, this is the way they can outcompete free-floating algae and pathogens. It stops them from getting washed away by moving water. It also allows them to share resources and defense mechanisms against threats. So in a way, biofilm is what allows the biology that we want to stay where we want it, which is 
in the regeneration zone. And this is also what allows it to work so efficiently as a biofilter. So when the water flows through the gravel and through the plant's roots, it passes all of this biofilm sitting on the surface of the roots and the gravel, and the biofilm absorbs any nutrients that are in that water. When bad bacteria or viruses make their way into the regeneration zone, the wetland ecosystem quickly sorts them out. You see, it's teeming with diverse plant and animal life. So all these pathogens, they get sucked into the wetland and trapped there, where they can quickly be biologically transformed and eliminated. Keep in mind that the whole pool goes through the regeneration zone every day. Now, the means by which the pathogens get biologically treated happens in various ways. So we have antibacterial activity, where the plant's roots are either absorbing the bacteria and destroying them, or exudates from the roots. There are also loads of little critters that predate on all of the bad bacteria, things like nematodes and protozoa. They actually gobble and eat them up. Antibiosis, and this is where fungi excrete toxins that kill bad bacteria. So remember that penicillin is a fungi. Or what happens is the bacteria simply get trapped in the wetland and they don't make it back out into the swim zone again. So the key principle here is that the beneficial microbes, bacteria, fungi, and other microbes, they perform best when they have something to cling to. When they have something to cling to, this is called biofilm. So it follows that the more surface area you have, the more biofilm you have. And the more biofilm you have, the more of nature's awesomeness that you have for cleaning and filtration. This is why with a gravel wetland, the more gravel you have, the better. The bacteria will break down the toxic buildup of nutrients and the pH will be buffered and maintained by thousands of chemical processes and exchanges taking place in this mini ecosystem. So the last principle which we need to give us beautiful water quality is oxygenation. This is fairly simple to achieve as it goes hand in hand with movement in a way. Where water moves, it takes in oxygen and oxygen creates conditions all the best bacteria and microbes to work for us. But it is very important to understand why. In the previous section, we talked about biological filtration and the millions of little microbes that are living in this sticky biofilm that is keeping our water clean. And it turns out that the best microbes for keeping water clean are those that thrive off oxygen. Now, you can aerate water by creating a waterfall or by blowing air bubbles into the water, but there's another way that water gets aerated that is often overlooked, and that is actually from the plant's roots itself. Let's take a quick look at how this cycle works, as it's pretty cool. So we all know that plants are taking in CO2 as they grow. This is the same outside the water, as it is inside the water. Then they're using sunlight that's coming down through the water, photosynthesize. What happens then is that they create sugars like glucose and carbohydrates. This helps the plant to grow, but it also pushes out through the roots. And all of those sugars help to feed the tiny billions and millions of microbes that are living in the root zone. And another byproduct of this is oxygen. As the plant grows, it pushes out tiny little bubbles of oxygen. You can sometimes see those when you knock the tank, they come bubbling up to the top. And in a natural pool with a gravel wetland and with a floating wetland, we're circulating water constantly through this root zone. And what that means is that we're constantly oxygenating 
all of that water. So if we are constantly running water through the roots of the plants, the water is getting pumped with delicious oxygen. And it also keeps all of our beneficial microbes super happy as they need oxygen too. One exception to this is if you have loads of fish, then you'll have a lot of respiration in a very small system and the fish will take up the last small amounts of oxygen and then they can die. So in that case, you might opt for a waterfall or an actual air bubbler like they do with a fish tank or aquarium.